Welcome, my name is Tim. And in this short video, I'm gonna guide you through the proper procedure for troubleshooting a faulty defrost board on the heat pump simulator. Now this is the defrost board right here at the top. And it has a, multiple functions within it. It has a timer mechanism that will attempt to send the heat pump into defrost approximately every 90 minutes. Again, this will only occur if the defrost thermostat is closed, sensing the presence of frost on the coil. In addition, the defrost board will also power the reversing valve in defrost mode, basically sending the flow of refrigerant into cooling mode so that the hot gas or discharge gas from the compressor is routed to the outdoor coil to melt the frost from the coil. In addition, the defrost board will also turn off the outdoor fan motor so that this heat is retained on the coil, causing the coil to defrost more rapidly. Now we're going to begin at the thermostat and make sure that the thermostat is calling for heat. So click on the thermostat here. Once at the thermostat, click the selector switch to the heat position. This will also turn the temperature setting up, so you won't need to use these arrows here on the thermostat. Now be sure to refer to the procedure guide at the top after each step. So once we've done this, we're going to click OK. Next, we need to assess which electrical loads are operating. So we're going to remove the cover on the indoor unit, and we can see that our indoor fan motor is running, as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows, so we can click OK. Now, when we get to the outdoor unit, well, obviously we can see there's a lot of frost on this coil, but both motors are running. Our outdoor fan is, in fact, running, and our compressor is also running. Now that we've determined that the three motors are running, we just want to check the electric heaters to make sure they're drawing current and that they're operational. And we can take the clamp on ammeter and just clip the jaws around this wire at the glowing orange hotspot. This is leading to the electric heater and we can see the electric heaters are drawing 30 amps so they're functioning fine. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. Now, is there frost on the outdoor coil? Well, obviously there is. And this obviously is a defrost related problem here. So we're gonna say yes, there is frost on the coil. Now, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is investigate the defrost thermostat, the board itself, or the defrost board, as well as the reversing valve. It's gotta be one of these three components that's causing this buildup of frost on the coil. So click OK. Now what you can do with the defrost boards is they provide these two little test pins here on the board that are highlighted in orange. And what this is gonna do, by placing a jumper across those pins, it's gonna bypass the timer mechanism and attempt to send the unit into defrost cycle. This will also bypass the defrost thermostat. So if we jumper these pins and the unit cycles into defrost and melts the frost from the coil, well, we know our defrost thermostat is gonna be our fault here. So let's jumper those pins by clicking on them. Now, click OK in the procedure guide, and does the coil defrost? Well, we can wait a second here, but no, it's not defrosting. So bypassing the defrost thermostat and the timer mechanism is not working. This eliminates the defrost thermostat as a possible cause. This is going to lead us to either the defrost board itself or possibly the reversing valve being faulty. So we're going to click no that the coil didn't defrost. And our next step is to measure at terminals OO and C on the board. This is going to check power to the reversing valve. So if we just place the leads at the two glowing orange hotspots, this will determine whether or not 24 volts is being sent to the reversing valve. And we can see that we've got zero volts. So the board is not sending power to the reversing valve solenoid, and it's not turning the outdoor fan motor off. So our defrost board is the fault here. We measured zero volts, so we can click no on the procedure guide. And we want to check for loose wires before we replace any components. And you can zoom in or rotate to verify you don't have any loose connections. And it appears that all connections are secure, so there's no loose wires. Our next step is to replace the board. Simply click on it, click Replace, and the new board will solve the problem. Now turn your power back on and observe one full cycle of operation to make sure that all loads are functioning properly. I would also pull the indoor air filter and check it for cleanliness, replacing it if necessary. And last but not least, go to the residence and make sure that heat is being received. And we can see from the red graphic of this floor register that we are in fact delivering heated air to the space. Now, if you're confused on any of these steps we just took, simply click this top left icon and you can review each step in the procedure that we just took. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching.
Please take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos. You can try our on-demand VR-enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.